Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I want to make two or three comments about Constantine, and then I want to flip over into talking about something smells fishy about these fish accounts in our Gospels, the four Gospels that tend to lead us to believe that Jesus, the Son of God, who only does what I see my Father do, I only do the will of my Father, and Jesus himself supposedly ate fish, he fed fish to people, multiplied fish, and guys, I'm telling you, that's probably been added into your Bible, and that's what I want to talk to you today about Constantine. Constantine is the one that had scripture modified to turn Christianity toward eating meat because the four pagan religions that was already in place in the Roman Empire was heavily into pagan worship, pagan animal sacrifices, and meat-eating festivals of dead animals. And so he didn't want to turn his empire upside down. No, it's easier to modify one small religious group of people who are hunted down and, and killed already for what they believe, right? So it's easier to modify that one small group of people and what they believe than to turn your empire upside down and change four pagan beliefs, okay? So I want to talk a little bit about Constantine, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit. I want to get into the fish thing today. So let me say this. Uh, Constantine was born in 272 AD. He came into power in 306 when his father died. And in 312, he sees this uh, cloud that's in the shape of a cross, okay? Okay. And he, said, he believes that he hears this voice to put that on his shields and that they would win the war. So he did. They painted these crosses, white sheet crosses like the cloud he saw on the shields. They won the war. And he said that he felt like that Jesus was on his side and that Jesus is the reason he won the war. I think he's confused and in error there. But you know what? I wouldn't there. But this is how he ended up pulling into and bringing Christianity into his empire. I need to say this very clearly. Constantine was not a Christian. Constantine was not a Jesus follower. He never recanted the sun worship religion that he believed the most in. It's called S-O-L, Saul, okay, the if I'm mispronouncing it, but it's the sun god. On one side of the coin was Constantine, and on the other side of the coin was not Jesus. It was the sun god, okay? Constantine was not a Christian. One year after his supposed conversion, he had his wife and son executed. Constantine would not allow anyone to water baptize him because the common belief then... <laughs> And in his day, was water baptism is what got you absolved and forgiven of all your sins. But it was all your sins up to that point, and that you had to stop sinning and commit no more evil, and there was no way for you to be forgiven of any sins you committed from that moment forward. So Constantine was waiting until his deathbed, and many people did. They waited till they were on their deathbed to get water baptized so that every single wrongdoing and sin that they had ever committed before they drew their last breath, they would be forgiven of. And that's what Constantine did. After 312, uh, his victory and all of this about Christianity, he kept doing all kinds of evil things his entire life, and he did not get water baptized until he was on his deathbed, okay? Does that sound like he was a Christian? I don't think so. So the last thing I want to do is talk about uh, Constantine and his changes to the Gospels in uh, the 325 to 345 time period, okay? I want Now, the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church records that Constantine changed the Gospels, Okay, and I know that that's hard for us to believe because we've been indoctrinated that actually we all but believe that Jesus carried the King James Bible around with him, and no doubt Paul did, right? Because it's the only inspired version of the Word of God that has ever existed. Boy, are we some naive people, right? So, yes, there's so much historical evidence out there when you know to look for it. Constantine indeed did have the Christian Bible changed 
because he can't uproot his entire empire, even if he did convert fully to Christianity and he did start following Jesus, he can't turn his Roman empire upside down and make millions of people stop eating meat when you've got a small sect of Christians who are vegetarians. It's easier to change the small group than to turn your empire upside down. To finish up uh, Constantine, I want to read an article that was written by a guy named Mike Shaw. And the reason I do is because he encapsulates, encapsulates, sorry, he brings together a lot of things that I really want you to know about. So I just want to read his letter and all of this stuff. I've checked it out and went behind him, but I think it'll be easier if I just read this to you. So here you go. It says, I know for a fact that till the time of Constantine, there were Bibles used by large numbers of Christians that supported vegetarianism. That is the truth right there. There are many, 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 many different writings that all different sects of Christian all over the world lived by and they taught Christians to be vegetarians. This right here lists a bunch of these different writings that were used in churches prior to Constantine, okay? Uh, this is a good book right here, Misquoting Jesus. He talks about the other scriptures that talked about vegetarianism that was not selected by the Roman Catholic Church to be the Bible that you're using today, okay? The Dead Sea Scrolls, they prove that the early Christians and the ones before Jesus, the Nazarenes, the Ebionites and the Essenes were all vegetarians. The Dead Sea Scrolls prove that, okay? And this is a good book, too. Uh, the New Testament, uh, a historical introduction to early Christian writings. That's a good book, too. Okay, let me get back to my article. Uh, he knows for a fact that there were other uh, Bibles used by large numbers of Christians that supported vegetarianism. Constantine had these Bibles banned and formed his own version. This is a matter of historical fact, and it is. It, if you know to look for it, it's right there for you. And here's where uh, I'm going to try to correct what he wrote. He said, I believe the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church, what I've already stated, states that Constantine had 30 of these Bibles written up as a basis for his new version of Christianity. Actually, the source that I went to uh, at the Oxford Dictionary says there were fi about 50 copies made. So that's the only thing I disagree with him at all on this article. It, he says 30, and it could just be a typo for that matter of what he read or what I've read, but I, can't, I read it was 50. Okay, so basically what he's saying is that that uh, Constantine, after the Council of Nicaea in 325, he came to an agreement with the Roman Catholic leaders. He integrated some of his own people from his government into leadership into the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, so now he's integrated the Roman Catholic Church, okay, the clergy, with his own government people. And they sit down and rewrite and enter things into our New Testament that leans toward people not being vegetarians, Jesus not being a vegetarian. Okay, let me keep reading. Going back to his article. I believe as John Davison, the author of the original Gospel of Jesus, that's this book right here, uh, that the first thing to go whenever a religion becomes part of the same mass culture is vegetarianism. Mankind is lustful after flesh, be it for eating or for sex. Mankind seems driven by a madness, and I do not believe for any reason that Jesus would have followed this example of humanity. And by the way, neither do I. Jesus was the perfect son of God, he said, I always do my Father's will. I do nothing of my own, only what I see and what I hear my Father. Okay, Jesus would never have lived outside of the perfect will of God 
And God spoke his perfect will in Genesis 1, I've created all of the plants and all the trees. Now eat all you want of that. That's how Jesus would have lived. And there's plenty of proof that Jesus was a vegetarian. Uh, this book right here has a whole chapter uh, dedicated to proving that Jesus was a vegetarian. Let me keep reading his article, guys. Uh, as I have never tired of showing the list, the early church fathers' writings are full of quotes that Jesus and his disciples were all vegetarians. Further, the church fathers' writings also say that the earliest Christians were all called Essenes. Again, this is a matter of historical fact and not a matter of faith. Modern Christians who want to be part of the masses and buy their green minivans and take property courses to buy and sell property to get rich is what he means and make up justifications for not helping the poor can do so and they can cling to their Constantine Bible. But I, for one, will follow Jesus. There are not two, now this is the part I want you to get, there are not two, even two, original manuscripts of the Bible that agree. That's hard, isn't it? Because we've been taught that our Bibles were perfect. Perfect. They're perfect. Nothing's been changed. Nothing is inaccurate. There's no errors. When in fact, we hardly even have two American Bibles that match each other. We just need to pray about that. Okay. And it says, there is no such thing as an inerrant Bible, and there never has been. Changes are still taking place in it, especially the NIV, the not inspired version. The NIV is the Bible of choice by fundamentalist, and yet it has had glaring changes made to it to make it say the opposite of original manuscripts. From Constantine to the modern NIV translators, there has been an evil, dark force that wishes to promote division, and the passage from Luke is just one example. He's talking about where Jesus supposedly ate fish. The reference in the early writings that not only Jesus and his disciples were vegetarians, but so too were many of the early church followers, fathers to are too numerous to ignore. So we've got Jesus, all of his disciples, all of the early church uh, leaders were all vegetarians. What did they know that we don't know, guys? These guys just didn't get out of bed and but teach this stuff. They knew something we don't know. And it's because things have been taken out of our Bibles and things have been put in our Bibles, okay? Now, that's all. I, well, actually, I do have something else. I want to read this to you. I'm not going to get to the fish, but tomorrow I'm going to talk about the fish. I want to show you some different things about the fish, but today I'm going to wrap this up. I want to read this to you. Uh, this is talking about St. Jerome when he got ready to do his one-man translation of the Latin Vulgate in 382 AD. He was commissioned by Pope Damasus, D-A-M-A-S-U-S, -S, Damasus, to translate the official Roman Catholic Bible. Here we go. This work today is named the Vulgate or the Bible. Uh, St. Jerome wrote to the Pope. Listen to this now. I have several different translations of which I have to make one uniform work, which is impossible. Therefore, I have to formulate something completely new, and that will probably make me a forgerer of holy essays. St. Jerome himself said that he had several translations that varied from each other, and his job was to make them one version, and it was impossible for him to do it, and that he would have to formulate something brand new. Okay? Now, here's what this... Uh, Jerome had to formulate the Bible in accordance to the teachings of the state church, the Roman Catholic Church and the Roman Empire, which means he could not include some of the basic truths written about the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, which was known at that time. These truths were especially essays, this will kind of raise your eyebrows, of reincarnation, non-existence of an eternal curse, Truths about animals in relationship to Jesus' love for them. 
All of this was not allowed to be included in the Bible, which today many Christians think is the authentic Word of God, so that there could be in existence a privileged state religion that has nothing in common with the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth except for his name with which the church manipulates religious people. Guys, I'm going to sign off. That was off of another article. I love you, and I'll see you here tomorrow, and we're going to talk about those smelly fish, okay? I love you. Bye-bye.